Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade. I'm gonna do something that I haven't really done before, which is I'm gonna make an entire project. It's a very small project, but it's gonna be a short choose your own adventure game. And I'm doing this primarily so that we can demonstrate how to import and use JSON files in a real project. So let me switch over to the finished project, which I have as another Game Maker Studio 2.3 project, and show you what it will look like. We're gonna have just a simple starting screen with the button that says start. You click on it, we'll have a back button, so we'll be able to go back to the start. But otherwise, we'll get a little bit of text up here and we'll get some options. We can choose go left. You can go left and find nothing but a dead end. Go back. You can go right. You can then continue to click buttons uh, until you get to an end. And at this point, you just go back and you're back here at the start. You can start all over. But let's switch back over to our fresh project and start making this. I'm not sure how many videos this will be. It might be one. It might be two. Uh, we'll see how long it goes. But I'm gonna start with creating sort of the framework of it, and then I'm going to move into actually importing and using the JSON file to create the choose your own adventure. To start with, we're gonna have two rooms. The first room is gonna be called RM Start. I'm gonna keep this very simple, so it's just gonna have a black background, and I'm gonna make it 400 by 600. And then I'm just gonna resize the grid to fit in these dimensions. This is gonna be the starting room, as you might expect and it'll be a pretty straightforward room. Uh, we'll have a button that says start that will take you to the room where the actual book, as we'll call it, will be. The next room we'll make, we'll just duplicate the arm start and create arm book. And for the moment, we're not gonna do anything. It's already exactly the way that we want it. We're only gonna need two sprites. The first sprite is gonna just, just be a basic button mask. It's going to be 20 by 20 and a pure white square. And I see now that I misspelled button mask, so let me fix that. There we go. The next sprite is gonna be called SPR button mask large. We want its width to be 300 and its height to be 60. And again, we want it to be a solid white image. Now, the way you create these buttons doesn't really matter for the project. The core of that's going to be creating a JSON file, importing it, and then interacting with it. But we need some way of interacting with the data once it comes in. And to do that, we're going to have these two buttons. And one of them is just going to use a generic mask that we can resize. And then one of them I want to be a specific size. And you'll see why later. Next, we want to create two fonts. The first will be our large font. We'll call it FNT large. I'm just going to keep it at Arial and change the size to 64. We can duplicate the font, keep everything the same, but change its size to 20, and this will be our small font. Again, I've already created the project, determined these dimensions, the size of the buttons, the size of the font. None of this really matters. You can make it be whatever you want uh, for your project. We have one script file, and I've simply added it from our existing project. These are the same scripts that we used when doing our JSON tutorial. We're actually only gonna use the import function, but you might as well import all of them. Maybe you want to implement your own save feature. Next, we're gonna create buttons. If you've watched the button tutorial, these will look very familiar. They're gonna be one of the most simple versions of the buttons that we created in that tutorial. So let's make a create event. We're gonna need a couple variables here. Unlike the buttons that we did in the button tutorial, these buttons will have text. So we're gonna create the variable my text blank. And then we're also gonna create two other variables that we'll use to flip the color depending upon whether or not we're hovering over the button. So C1, which will be white, and C2, which will be black. And then we're gonna use the two basic functions that we created in the button tutorials, interact, which will be a function that just calls activate button and then activate button, which is the function that we will override in the individual buttons once we create them. And by default, it will just say button activated. So now let's create a tap event and put in the function interact. And now we're gonna add the code to flip the color of the button when we click on it. So when we push down with the left mouse button, we'll have our first color equal C black, and our second color equals C white. Notice this is reverse of what it was before, so the colors will invert. And then when we have any left release, so we'll use the global left release, we're simply going to flip the colors back. 
primary color will be white, the secondary color will be black. Now we actually want to do a manual draw event, and we want to draw our button. And the reason we're doing it like this, even though we are going to use the button mask, is we want the mask to determine the touches. We want to be able to, to tell if we've clicked on the button. Um, but we want to be able to draw the button ourselves and flip the color. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this, but the way I'm going to do it is simply overwrite the basic draw functions and then draw a rectangle using the masks left, top, right, and bottom to draw a rectangle the same size. And we'll draw that rectangle at whatever color C1 is at the moment, which by default will be white, but when we click on it, will be black. Then we're gonna flip the color for drawing the font, and we're gonna set the font to be my font, which is a variable we still need to add, and then we're going to set the H line and V line to be middle, and then we're simply gonna draw text and set that to be my text. Now, because our sprite or our mask is centered, that's why we have everything centered here, center and middle, and it will draw the text at the center of the button that we create. So let's actually create these buttons. The first button we'll create is object start. We're gonna use the sprite button mask, make it a child of button parent, and then we're going to inherit the create event. And its activate function will simply be room go to rm book. We want to come over here to variable definitions, add my font in as an object variable, set its type to be an asset, and choose the font asset. And then we'll default it to F and T large. So now that we've created our start button, let's add this button to the start room. We can add it to the room and size it to be whatever size we want, as long as it's bigger than the text that we give it at the font size that we've set it to. And let's actually run this and see if our button works so far. If it does work, uh, it should switch colors when we click on it and take us to RM book, which will be blank and then be a dead end at the moment. All right, here's the project so far. One thing I wanna say is that I actually got a very strange error. When I ran it the first time, the button was very small so I ran it again in the debugger, and indeed the bounding box was very small, but it was not the size that it was stretched to. I verified all of the code and ran it one more time, and then it worked. So I'm not really sure what was going on. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but this is what it should look like. And if we click on start, we see it flash quickly, and we're now in the next room, which is a blank room, can't do anything else. So now let's create the back button. We'll just duplicate the start button, go into the create event, change the text to back, and then make the function go to room start. The other thing we want to do with the back button is go to the variable definitions and switch the font to FNT small. Now we can go to RM book and we're going to add it to the top left corner and we're using a much smaller font here so we're going to make the button a lot smaller so we have space for our text and buttons and let's run this and see if it works. So here we go. We have the start. We can click on it. Now we have back. Click on it and we can switch back and forth between rooms. So with that, we've created pretty much all of the basics, uh, sort of the frame of what we need. And now we can actually get into setting up our JSON file and setting up how we're gonna import it and interact with it once we import it. But I think that's enough for now, so we'll call this the project setup and we'll return in the next tutorial uh, talking about how the JSON file is set up.